Today we shall embrace nature by creating this beautiful effect of leaves flying through the wind using simulation notes in Blender. For this tutorial I've created this little tree over here using the sampling tree add-on that comes with Blender. However the leaves flying through wind generator should work on any tree on which the wooden part and the leaves are separate objects. Now let's get started by going into geometry notes. And let's click on the leaves and let's click on a new to create a new geometry nodes. First thing we're going to do is we're going to create a simulation zone so that we can simulate the leaves. Let's make a little bit more space like this. First thing that I want to do is let's add in a set position node so that we can simulate the leaves going into a certain direction. So if we make this Y direction one meter, for example, then you will see every frame the leaves will go over the Y axis one meter. However, I don't want to have it that all the leaves are going at once. I want to, per frame, I want to randomly choose a leaf that starts floating away. And to do this, I want to create a new attribute. And this new attribute, if you click on the simulation input and you press N to make this pop-up open, you can click on plus to create a new attribute and you name this like go flying or something like that. And this new attribute should not be a geometry. No, it should be a Boolean. Because we have a Boolean, we can say it either goes flying or it is not flying. And now we have this attribute, but to actually track for each leaf individually, this attribute that it goes flying, we need to add in a capture attribute node, which we set from float to Boolean because we want to track a Boolean. We connect the go flying with this value. And now if you add in a math node and you place it like this and you connect it like this, we can say, okay, each frame choose a new leaf that has to start flying. So we can do this with a random value, which we will set on Boolean and we connect value with value. And this probability over here is going to be the chance that a leaf is going to get chosen on a certain frame to start flying. So if the probability is 0.5, that means that there is a 50% chance for each leaf to start flying on that certain frame. To make this actually work, we also have to make the go flying connect with the selection of the set position. And now if you press play, you see this happens. The problem is that this random value is not doing it for each leaf individually. No, it's doing it for each vertice of each leaf individually. And we don't want this. So to make it that it takes a random value for each whole leaf individually, we want to import a mesh island node and the island index, we can connect that with ID. And then you will see it takes random leaves to start flying. However, it's now just taking one random group of leaves to start flying and not like a flow of leaves each frame. That's because the seed value doesn't change over here. So for each leaf, it always stays the same random value. To make the seed value change over time, we can add in a scene time node and connect frame with seed. And then you will see this will happen. You see it's now like this. Uh, it's a little bit more visible what is happening if we set the probability a little bit lower to like 0 0.005. And then we're getting this, like leaves that are flying away from it. If you wait long enough, then you will see that at some point there are no leaves left and you have an empty tree. I want to create a little bit more of a wind effect in our leaves because now they are going in a straight line and that's not really realistic. To create this wind effect, we're first going to start with a noise texture. And this noise texture, we're going to connect color with the offset of the set position. And then if we reset our timeline, you see this happens. A few things we want to fix. Yeah, it's now going diagonally in one line. I don't want this. I want it to stay at its place for now. So we're going to normalize this noise texture by creating a vector math node. And on each axis, we want to subtract 0.5 from it. And then this happens. It now stays in one point. The second problem that we have is that this noise texture and this subtract node are working on the individual vertices and not for each leaf individually. Let me visualize what this output looks like by clicking Ctrl Shift click and Ctrl Shift click on this one. Then you will see on each vertice, it's a different color, right? But I want that each leaf becomes a different color. And to do this, we have a very beautiful node called accumulate field node. And if you set this from float to vector and from point to face, you can get for this value, the total position of each leaf. And now if we preview the total value, then you see <laughs> everything becomes one thing. If you want to have a different color for each leaf, we can work with this group ID by taking this mesh island over here and press shift D to duplicate it and then connect island index again with the group ID. And now you're getting for each leaf a different 
color. And this we can use that in the set position. So if you remove the viewer node and you connect the total value with the offset, now if you press play, you will see leaves will be floating away and they keep their shape. I do think it would be good if we normalize the output of the accumulate field. So if we do a vector math node and we set this from add to normalize, now we're really getting the direction instead of like a random position. And let's also make the speed of the leaves a little bit lower by creating a new vector math node, set this from add to scale and scale this by 0.1. I want to have good control over the direction of the leaves. So what I'm going to do is go into numpad 7 to go into top view, press shift A to add in an empty plane axis, and then press shift D to duplicate this to get another empty. And these two empties are going to determine the direction in which our leaves are going to float. I'm going to name this empty point 1, for example, and I'm going to name this empty point Two. You can name this whatever you like as long as it's clear that they are separated. Now let's go back into our geometry nodes and let's take our point one and drag that in into our geometry nodes just like this. And let's also drag in our point two and let's turn this both on relative position. I want to determine the direction from one point to the other. So with a vector math node, you can subtract both locations from each other. And now you get like a line that goes from one empty to the other. So we get the direction basically. And to implement this direction into our geometry nodes, we can first make a little bit more space. And then we can add in another vector math node. Keep this on add and add this subtract node to that. And then you should see that you're getting this. See the leaves are going like this. And if you take these empties and you rotate it, you see they go into that direction. And then they go into that direction. You can even go like this so that they go up, for example. Pretty cool. It will always be better if we normalize this direction so that the distance between the empties does not affect the speed of the leaves. If you want that to happen, then just remove the normalized node, of course. But I like it more with the scaling node. Let's change some variables in our geometry nodes to make this look a lot more smooth like wind. First thing that we're going to do in the noise texture, I'm going to set the scaling on point three. And you're already getting more smoothly going leaves. And let's also set the roughness all the way to one so that we're getting more randomization in our wind effect. You see, now we're getting that sometimes it goes like in one streak, like, like this, right? So to add in even more randomization, we can set this noise texture from 3D to 4D, and then we get this W value. And this W value, we can basically get a new random noise texture. If we make this dependent on the scene time by connecting the frame to the W, then we're getting this. You see, they are now changing too much, like too fast. We want to scale this down a little bit. If we do a math node and we set this from add to divide and we divide this by 20, then it looks a lot better. Then it looks more like leaves that are floating to the wind. And now you also know how to embrace nature using simulation nodes in Blender. If you like this short but sweet tutorial, please give it a thumbs up. Comment down below if you have any questions. And if you don't want to miss out on any future videos, I recommend to subscribe to the channel. And by the way, if you want to have this Blender file, you can find it on my website, mtranimation.com. That's also the website where you can find all the other project files of all my previous videos. And with that being said, I see you in the next one.